Hello, everybody, and welcome. It's a 1 o'clock p.m. Central European time. I really appreciate uh, you arrived. Uh, nice to have you all. I don't want to waste your time, so we will straight away. We will start. Uh, today, we will be talking about uh, sludge uh, dewatering and especially decentralized sludge dewatering. Uh, my name is Miloslav Loshek, and I am sending my best regards from Amcon Europe. Uh, we are based in Prague, uh, Czech Republic. There is one, my, my colleague, uh, Sean, right with me today, uh, because we are in the COVID situation, so we are trying to keep social distancing. So Sean is not sitting with me, but Sean, are you there somewhere? Yep. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for participating. Yeah, so it's good. The technology is working, you know, digital era is on our favor, so let's hope it's going to stay like this. Uh, I hope you will be able to understand uh, my Czech version of, of English. I hope so. Uh, just a few words when it comes to organization of the webinar. We will keep you all muted, uh, so we are not getting any disruption sound on the background. Uh, for your questions, please use Q&A function, which is embedded into the Zoom tool we are using today for our webinar. Uh, so feel free to ask. Uh, we will try to answer your questions at the end of the webinar. But of course, you don't have to use this function. You can contact us anytime you want after the webinar using the standard communication channels like telephone or the email. You, are, you can find all the contact information at our website, uh, www.amcon-eu.com. Uh, you can actually see the address on the first slide too. Uh, before we start, let's, uh, let me share with you uh, one slide uh, with, uh, with agenda. So here are the key points I would like to, to cover during the webinars. Introduction, who we are, uh, why we think we are competent to talk about decentralized such dewatering, uh, what actually decentralized sludge dewatering is and what's the difference to the centralized, centralized one. We will be talking about some ecological and economical factors when it comes to considering both approaches. And in the end, I'd like to share with you some of uh, real life uh, situations. All right, so the question, are we competent enough to talk about uh, this subject? Well, I hope so. Uh, Amcon, our company, has been established in, in 1974 in, in Tokyo, Japan. And during the first years of operation, it was a company maintaining and operating wastewater treatment plant in the region. And then the sludge handling was always and always will be a very important part of the wastewater treatment plant operation and process. And those days, uh, there was really no suitable technology for small wastewater treatment plants to reduce amount of sludge for disposal. Uh, what do I mean by suitable technology? Uh, some kind of small scale, easy to use, easy to set up, easy to operate technology with ideally low consumption of electricity and rinsing water, obviously. And because there was no such a technology available on the market, so there was a target or there was a, I don't want to say dream, but let's say target to develop one, to have one for the purpose of the company, to make the life easier. So in early 90s, there was the first volume screw press introduced to the world. And at that time, it was really innovative screw press combining uh, fixed and moving rings, which could dewater the, the, the sludge for small wastewater treatment plant. Today, we'll, we will not be specifically talking about, about the such solution Amcon is providing, its, its technology, its volume screw presses. Today, we are talking about the decentralized sludge dewatering. So maybe in, in a future webinars, we will be talking more into depth in the technology. Uh, just maybe the proof uh, that the volume dewatering press is a great piece of device is the fact that there is a plenty of copy makers and even counterfeit products on the market. So it just kind of proves the technology is really good and is functioning all around the globe. Uh, you know, it's very cool and popular nowadays to say that something in, is in the company's DNA or in company's genes. But we can really say that the decentralized 
sludge dewatering. It's part of the company DNA because without this approach, the company would, would, would have never developed uh, volute uh, dewatering uh, press. So I can proudly say that, that you know, decentralized sludge laundering is really something very common for us in, in, in the company. Now I have a little quiz for you before we will start to talk about the differences between the centralized and decentralized sludge dewatering. Let's talk about dewatering itself. Uh, and I have a question, little quiz for you. Uh, don't take it that seriously, just estimation, just for fun. How many trunk trucks you, you think, 10 cubic meters each, are needed each year in a village of 2,000 population equivalent, which do not dewater the sludge? Let's estimate the sludge concentration about 2%. I will now try to use the function of Zoom, which is a poll, launching polling now. And you should be able to see options on your screen. So how many tanker trucks you think? Uh, I'm getting, yes, we are getting first answers. So thanks for that, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to see it. I will share it with you, obviously. So do you think it's 50, 10 cubis? 10 cubic tankers a year, 100 or even 200? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, still coming new, okay. Good, okay. So let me end polling now and share, share the results with you. And we have a winner and, and the winners are estimating, estimating 200, which is correct, which is correct. And uh, now let's show, uh, let's show it. Stop share results, close the window. And next slide, please. Yes, here it, here it goes, yeah. So raw versus, raw versus dewatered sludge. 2000 population equivalent, uh, quite small, small, bigger village, uh, really small town, 2% concentration, will produce something about 200 tanker tracks 10 cubic meter each. And if we manage to dewater the sludge to increase concentration from 2% to let's say 20, let's see the difference. It's amazing, you know, the, 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 the difference, the reduction of the sludge would be around like 90%. And you can see that instead of 190, we have 19. I'm, I'm of course using the same equivalent like 10 cubes uh, tanker trucks. However, the 20% uh, sludge is not liquid anymore. It's already in the solid state. So it's but just for easy comparison. But I couldn't help myself. I actually, in the last minute, I added one more slide. Because in, in certain situations, we are able to thicken and dewater sludge from the oxidation ditch or aeration tanks. And we can do it in one process step using the one, only one machine. And let's say we are feasible to, to increase the sludge concentration from 0 0.2, 3.5 to some 16%. It is feasible to done. And just to demonstrate that uh, kind of uh, how to imagine what it means. If you see, the, you see the, the blue circle on the screen now, which represent or its surface represents the original volume of the of the sludge low concentration zero point something and the yellow one represents the one the volume we achieve after dewatering this the sludge or thickening the watering at once at 16 percent which is amazing so it clearly shows it makes sense you know we all know that the cargo companies shipping the goods all around the world they are trying to not to ship air right just to ship goods and we should do the same. We are trying to get rid of the sludge, dry solids, and not to get rid of the water, which is a pity. Water should stay in the wastewater treatment plant, should be cleaned, and we should return it to the, to the nature. This is our, our task. OK, so now let's finally talk about the difference between the centralized and decentralized sludge dewatering. So what it means for centralized scenario? We have some wastewater treatment plants, different villages or cities, towns, 
and we have some central one, usually next to the big city. And uh, all the small wastewater treatment plant, plant are shipping, sending their sludge waste, waste, waste activated sludge to the central plant where usually, usually big installations like belt presses, centrifuges are installed. And because of the high operation cost, they need to deal with a huge amount of sludge in order to, to split the cost per, per one cube to some reasonable level. So this is typical scenario for centralized, centralized uh, sludge dewatering. When it comes to decentralized, it's very similar. We have some independent wastewater treatment plants. But what they are doing, they are keeping everything in one loop. So it means they are equipped with the technology scaled according to their size, and they are dewatering the sludge themselves directly at the day plant. And this is what we are after. This is what we like. And there are plenty of arguments why it's clever to do that. We will touch it later on. Uh, just kind of picture to compare some real life situations from our own experience. Let me let me describe maybe this, you know, down here, number three. You can see that the wastewater treatment plant, you know, the, the, the distance between the, the, the plant and the central one, 11 kilometer size of the wastewater treatment plant, 4,000, almost 5,000 population equivalent producing monthly almost 500 cubic meters of waste activated sludge. And they need to ship to send almost 50 tanker trucks, 10 cubic meters each every month to be dewatered at the central plant. Instead, the, there is a possibility to, to use a you know, good reliable technology like our volute is. To install the technology, in this case, it would be volute FS201 for this size. And instead of sending or you know, disposing 49 uh, tanker trucks, it would be enough to deal with eight five cubic meters containers. That's the, that's, that's the difference you know, in, the, in the real life situation. Well, when talking about uh, you know, which way to go, usually we promote decentralized sludge dewatering. We talk about ecological and economical factors. Right, ecological, it's quite obvious. You know, if we need to ship this amount of sludge anywhere, we will definitely pollute the air, you know, uh, around, the, around the communities, around the villages and cities. We will have heavy trucks on the roads, usually small roads, that, that's, that, that's, that, that, that's, that's true. And, you know, there is an environmental risk of, you know, accident and spilling the sludge in the nature. It's not a good thing, but to be honest, I think that majority of people are aware of these arguments, but the question is if they really are part of our decision-making process. Some countries, people are very much sensitive on the ecological factors. In other countries, not really. This is the situation. But everybody is very much aware of the economical aspects of comparing those two approaches. And when it comes to economical you know, aspects, we can talk about transportation cost per kilometer, what is the distance you know, from the wastewater treatment plant to the central one, you know, how much do I have to pay for the sludge disposal, how, do, how much do I have to pay for the technology to devolve the sludge myself. This is very, very important, and it all becomes the part of the equation we will be talking about uh, soon, too. But, uh, there is a one thing uh, which I think it's somehow beyond ecological or economical factors. And it, it is, uh, I would call it like, you know, freedom and independency. Uh, because we should ask ourselves in, if we are in the scenario of centralized sludge dewatering, how to maintain fair and long-term relationship between small and big wastewater treatment plants. What if there's going to be significant price increase for the centralized sludge dewatering? What will a small waste, wastewater treatment plant do if there's a delay in you know, picking up the sludge? Where to store it, what to do? That's important question. So there is a one kind of question, uh, sounds almost like written by Shakespeare. And the question would be, uh, to be dependent or not to be dependent. And it's uh, 
up to us. Um, some people really like to be completely independent, to rely on our own resources, uh, not on central ones, but some people might have it differently. They are okay with the centralized solutions, but there is always a risk. There's always a risk. So we just, just should be aware of that. Well, uh, decentralized slash dewatering, you know, as we discuss, you know, eco ecological factors, improving the living environment for the local communities, definitely yes. Lower operating cost for wastewater treatment plant and increased security for sludge management, yes. If we keep it under our control, it's definitely like that. Lower operation costs we will touch later on because now technology can be really small and all the costs connected with that, which is usually the flocculant used to flocculate the sludge, uh, rinsing water to clean the technology uh, and electricity. These are probably the, the three most, most uh, operating costs connected with uh, running our own uh, dewatering technology. Very important, and there is a there is another one important, which is which is consistent day to day dewatering. You know, uh, everybody who is in the business and and, and do, does something with the sludge dewatering will tell you that uh, the the fresher sludge, the better, easier to dewater, and uh, we are talking about. Comparing the watering of the of the older sludge and and the fresh sludge, we distinguish the, the filtrate, you know, the water which is coming after the dewatering of the sludge. And uh, if the sludge is really fresh, we call it like light light uh, light filtrate. It means that the nitrogen and and phosphorus are still being kept in the sludge cake. It doesn't go back to the filtrate, which then means, you know, of course, it complicates the process afterwards. So there is another, I would say, this is a process advantage of day-to-day -day dewatering of the sludge compared to the one when you have to store it for some period of time and then dewater it. And just to give you a hint uh, about about the the lineup of our of our you know products or volute dewatering press. You can see how it looks like uh, on the picture. Picture, you know, on the right, on the on the right, it's not a demo. Uh, it, it's a really, you know, real machine, even if it's small. Uh, it's it's a real uh, volute ES051, which is you know ideal for really small villages. It's very popular by Russia in, in Russia, uh, for example. And can be used for for small villages, you know, from from population equivalent length equivalent 50 people, which is really you know really small scale, not a big beast. It does not take up more space than two automatic washing machines, and it has built-in flocculation tank already with a mixer and everything, so it's like a ready-made machine, such as small it can be. As I already said, there is another important factor to considering the, the, the water technology, especially for the long run, and it is the, the electric power consumption. And for the small unit, you can see on the picture, it just consumes 0 0.2 kilowatts uh, per hour, 200 watts. So like two, two 100 watts bulb for lighting, basically, it's enough for, for this machine. On the opposite scale, the bigger, the biggest uh, product we, we provide, we produce ourselves is the FS404, which is already a serious machine, which can, which can handle 40 cubic meters per hour of waste activated sludge, if we talk about 1% of concentration. And this machine consumes only nine kilowatt hours. If you would compare it with the, with the other technology like centrifuge, it's completely different universe. So it's very important to take it into consideration. Um, in addition to decentralized sludge dewatering, there is another option. And, and it's fair to say that uh, it's a mobile dewatering solution where the wastewater treatment plant hires an external supplier who comes with a mobile unit and dewater the sludge. The undeniable advantage of this is that it's not necessary to move a huge amount of sludge around. This is good, but undisputed disadvantage is 
that the wastewater treatment plant will remain dependent on the third party uh, service. In the table, we can see some comparison, important things. CAPEX, uh, capital expenditures, OPEX, operational expenditures, reliability and the filtrate management. So for mobile dewatering, of course, there is no CAPEX. You don't have to invest into technology. You just pay a service fee, which will appear in the OPEX. Reliability, I think it's high, depends of the service provider, obviously, if it's you know, reliable or not, but let's say it is. Uh, filtrate management, uh, as we discussed, because it's not like day-to-day -day, uh, sludge dewatering, there might be a problem with the nitrogen content, which might cost a little bit of extra cost. When it comes to you know, purely decentralized solution, when, when it comes to CAPEX, yes, we need to invest into the technology. Depends what is the ROI, how to calculate the ROI, we will touch later on. The OPEX, it's very small because low uh, consumption of electricity, low consumption of water, and consumption of, of the flocculant is normal as for any other dewatering technology. Reliability is very high. Uh, volume uh, de, um, uh, dewatering presses are low speed machines. Therefore, if there is any trouble approaching, it will not approach quickly. There is always time to fix it and maintain well. It is almost maintenance free. It deserves only a few minutes a day for the maintenance, which is basically just a cleaning and checkup, I would say. And it's very easy to plan, to plan the, the possible maintenance for the future. If you compare it with the centrifuge, which is really high speed you know, uh, machine, if there is something going to happen, it is going to happen quickly. When it comes to filter management, we discussed day-to-day -day dewatering brings advantage for the, for the daily operation of the, of the wastewater treatment plant. Now let me share with you a table uh, or graph, sorry. Uh, this is not written in the stone. It depends market to market, but, but this is coming from our experience and our calculation on, on the German market uh, for, your, for your interest. So it's, it compares those three technologies, or not technologies, the three approaches, centralized, mobile, and decentralized, our own, let's put it this way. And when it comes to cost, so centralized, it's the most expensive one. You pay the fee, you transport the sludge around. So, you know, if you look back after 10, 15 years, it's going to be pretty expensive. The mobile one, uh, good thing, you don't have to invest to anything, so no CapEx. And usually the, the price or the total overall cost is significantly cheaper. It's more convenient for wastewater treatment plant to use the mobile compared to centralized one. When it comes to decentralized, your own, using your own technology to develop the sludge, of course, you can see that already first year you have to invest into, into the, into the devaltering uh, technology. But in the long run, thanks to no service fees, no transportation cost, or heavily reduced transportation costs, let's put it this way, it will be overall much cheaper than anything else. Those red circles represent some kind of break even points compared to centralized one, where we calculate like second, already third year, the decentralized solution might be more financial convenient than the centralized one. And fifth or sixth years uh, break even point when comparing the mobile with decentralized. Now, let me share with you uh, a little Excel sheet, let's call good old Excel, Microsoft Excel. Yeah, I hope you are able to see it, see it now on your screen, how to calculate return on investment, ROI. It's not a rocket science, it's important to have correct data. Uh, without that, it's really difficult to calculate. What we need to know, uh, how much do we have to pay for waste activated sludge disposal? Uh, how much do we have to pay for cake, uh, the sludge after it's being devolved? How much do we have to pay for the tanker truck to come to, to, get a, to, to dispose the uh, waste activated sludge? What is the diff distance between, between uh, those two places? 
how much do I have to pay for, for one kilometer? What is the concentration of the of the waste activated sludge? What is the concentration uh, after dewatering? And just number of days in order to be able to calculate it monthly and yearly. Uh, if I take uh, some some example of the uh, smaller town, eight thousand uh, population equivalent, we can see how much sludge it produces every month what it means, how many tanker trucks I need to ship, how much is going to be when it comes to dewatered the sludge, and how many uh, trucks I need uh, to, to get rid of the, the cake of five cubes, in this case only not 10. So these are the results I know, and this, this just calculates how much do I save monthly and how much do I save yearly. This number actually show us the potential savings if I will invest into uh, decentralized sludge dewatering. Of course, it means that the technology will cost something and I need to include that. We are trying to be almost very fair to our customers and trying to, to help them not to forget about anything. It's not the technology itself. We need to calculate for some maybe reconstruction needed, new piping, maybe a conveyor for the sludge cake and all the kind of little arrangements which cost something. We need to include them into the calculation in order to get the proper view in how many years this investment will be paid off. And after this break even point, I will be actually saving money and saving means earning. So this was a little bit of, of the EXO. Let me go back to the presentation. I just, just hope it works for you. I have to trust the technology. I hope so. And now let me share with you uh, some real life cases. Uh, one of it, uh, by the way, on the picture, right, you, the gentleman behind the machine is, is a Sean, who is with us today online uh, somewhere. It, this is a real installation, very typical case, when, once, the, once the small or mid-size, maybe bigger size, really depends, it depends on what country, in which country you live in, uh, almost 5,000 uh, uh, population equivalent uh, used to be completely centralized. Decide, decided to take care of the sludge dewatering themselves and invested into, into the volume dewatering press. In this case, it's one of our sm smaller units, uh, ES131. You can see some key parameters of the solids concentration in the, in the raw sludge, waste activated sludge 0.7%. You have a flow rate, uh, dry solid throughput, final cake uh, solid contents, 17.5%. So very nice figure. Capture rate, how much we are able to capture uh, solids in the filtrate, 90%. Not bad result. Could be better, but not bad result. And you can see even the, the polymer uh, dosage, uh, 9.5 grams of the neat polymer per, per kilogram of, of dry solids. Uh, very, very typical installation. Uh, there is one which is a bit special. Uh, what happens sometimes uh, when the wastewater treatment plant was built, uh, they just didn't calculate it with the uh, sludge dewatering at the place. So there is usually not enough space under the roof. So there's a solution to use, as we call it, content containerized solution, so to use container and to put every technology inside that. It, it's all insulated, uh, there's a heating, lighting, everything what is needed to, uh, to, process, uh, to process sludge dewatering outside, not under the roof of the wastewater treatment plant. In this case, uh, we can see a kind of mid-size uh, machine, GS301, Waste activated sludge, solid concentration 2.2%, flow rate, uh, capture rate the same 90%, uh, cake solid content, so dryness of the cake almost 21%, polymer dosage 11 grams. Uh, this is the concrete, concrete data for the concrete uh, installation. So we are approaching to the end uh, of the webinar. You know, talking about uh, decentralized sludge dewatering. 
you know, the purpose of this webinar was to, you know, challenge the status quo when it comes to centralized sludge dewatering. There are still people who think that the sludge dewatering is, is too complicated, you know, too costly, and therefore it needs to be centralized and only specialists in big wastewater treatment plants should, should take care of that. I think it is not the case anymore. And by the way, that's why our company exists. There is a solution which, which provides independency. And I think, you know, it is very important, important factor. So that's it from my side, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's open questions and answers. I hope you have some. I can see. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very simple question. Uh, hi, very interesting presentation. Well done. Can we get the presentation? Obviously, yes, you can get the presentation and you will even be able to get recording or we will share it on YouTube or somewhere. So if you want somebody else to watch it, if you find it interesting, I will, we will appreciate that. Maybe I will give you more, you know, seconds to, to punch down a question, if you like. Yeah. Let's give you one minute. What about that? Yeah, some question from the Excel template. Yeah, questions are popping out. Mila, there is one question if you don't mind if I jump in. Yeah, Sean, you know, go ahead, definitely. Question, uh, do you have experience with starch-based flocculant in your equipment? Uh, I will get, we'll get back to you about this question. Uh, we will need to get more details about it. So we will get back to you about this. But it's definitely a challenge. This is not, I would say, some of the sludges we, com we call complicated. And this is definitely one of those. That's for sure. Yeah. Sean, any questions you would like to take? How many references do we have in Europe? Um, we roughly have about references <laughs> because we usually count this globally. We have about nearly, uh, I would say, over 48,000 installations. And I would say we have about Nearly, I would say, 1,000 installations from Amcom Europe. You have to check it. Honestly speaking, I don't know the precise yeah. number, too. How many no. of those we have in Europe? We will have to get back to you about these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, that's right. There's an interesting question. Uh, what is the limit inlet concentration to the volute? As long as if it's flowable, it is. I have done... Uh, Total suspended solids, which was roughly 18% from the bath, and it was still flowable. So as long as it's flowable with the pump. It's a challenge for the sludge pump, right? That's the point. Yeah. Is it possible to feed another question, 1% DS constant, uh, content? Yes, uh, as long as the inlet concentration is minimum 2,000 milligrams per liter total suspended solids, 0.2% TS, we don't need presignin, which is one of the biggest advantage of the balloon. We can directly dewater thin sludge while belt press, decanter centrifuges, they have to thicken it, presignin it. Yeah. And decanter often have to presignin up to even four or 5% in order to perform as designed. And it's gonna cost extra cost for thickening operation polymer. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. How many how many installations we have in Czech Republic? You know, again, I don't I don't know, you know, precisely. 20, 30. <laughs> this is channel estimation, really. 
I should know. I should probably know precisely. Sorry about that. But yeah, but you know, Czech Republic is our home market, so we have quite a few. <laughs> and what I have to say, actually, recently, uh, uh, usually very much talk about municipal wastewater treatment plants, right? But there's a plenty of industrial, you know, food and beverage, uh, chemical industry, and this kind of stuff. Uh, this is where we are focusing uh, very much. It's a, it's a bit challenging uh, when, it, when we talk about industrial applications, because as you know, really every sludge is completely different. So basically without the pilot test, we would never sell anything because it would be too risky to do so. So we always conduct the pilot test. We need to understand what is the sludge about, how to flocculate it way, uh, well, how to find the minimum dosage of the flocculant. It's a challenge, but it's, uh, it's, it's definitely the direction we, we go uh, and develop, uh, develop our, our business and portfolio uh, in the Czech Republic. Any other questions? Thank you, you're welcome. <laughs> How we should feed polymer into sludge? Yes, uh, good, good questions. Uh, there are more opportunities how to do that. I would say the standard, uh, what we are using is that every volute dewatering press is equipped with the flocculation tank, uh, which needs to have a source of the flocculant itself. It depends if you use the, the liquid polymer or the powder, of course. So we tend to use uh, liquid uh, polymers uh, very often, but we use powders as well. So uh, first we need to dilute the, the, the polymer with water and then to inject it into the flocculation tank. So there's certain certain time for to react uh, when the sludge reacts with the polymer. It creates beautiful flocks, and then it's going to be fed into the into the cylinder of volute dewatering press. Uh, it doesn't have to be flocculation tank. It can be a pipe uh, mixer, without with or without a dynamic mixer. It depends. Or not recently, uh, we have developed a very small flocculation tank, which is still a tank but combined with the dyna dynamic mixer. So there's a many opportunities how to do that. But uh, as we discussed, you know, every case is special and especially uh, those in the industrial one. So it's always, uh, I would say the proof that the supplier is good. And I hope we are a good supplier that we understand of what we are doing and we are trying to find the right solution for the concrete sludge, for the concrete conditions. That's the challenge. Yeah, Sean, any other questions you'd like to take? We have many questions. <laughs> uh, one thing, uh, what is the minimum our particle size you can hold back with self chemical flocculation? We have to use uh, polymer product flocculants in order to utilize our products. So we, we, cannot, I, we, we cannot use whistle flocculant. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Flocculation is the key and is the king in our business. Uh, do we need aging tank? No. It was covered in the in the in the flocculation tank. It's when it comes to aging, as you can say, it, it needs some retention time, of course, in order to react in the flocculation tank. Dynamic mixer, if you are using the pipe with the dynamic mixer, it actually actively helps to mix gently. Rapidly depends, you know, on the situation to mix the the sludge with the with the polymer. Yeah, it it helps to speed up the process a bit. But you know, some sludges are really so complicated that the flocks you create are rather soft. Some which are easy to flocculate are really strong and easy to dewater. It's you know, it's a very specific uh, uh, business we are in. Or static mixer is enough. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, it can be enough. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you are right. How many containerized solution were installed in your Europe so far? I would say, I would say something like ten plus minus. As it's not only us, but our distributor also uh, installed them in the container. We have 
from small size unit up to the big big ones, the FS400 series installed in the container. Actually, we got a couple FS400s installed in a container. Yeah. There is a question. Are you able to measure the sludge methane, um, methane? Uh, I don't know if you have, this is my Czech version of English, I told you, uh, methane potential. Uh, no, we don't do that. Uh, if we talk about digestion or, you know, biogas stations, we are in this business too. Uh, when it comes to actually preparing the sludge for digestion or even after digestion, Again, it's very challenging industry, honestly speaking, but uh, the advantage of the volume is that we can quite precisely uh, hit the expected dryness of the, of the sludge before digestions, like, you know, it's usually like 14, 15, 16%, which volume is excellent to do it in one step. And after digestion, of course, the, 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 I would say, request is to develop as much as possible, obviously. Uh, so yeah, we are, we are trying to be active in this field too, but we don't measure the sludge methane potential. We don't do that. It's not uh, our service we provide. Uh, do you have a good experience with cellulose and as the watering agent for complicated sludges? Yes, yes, yes. I can see that uh, our participant is expert in this field. Yeah, this is used. But then it, it's again, it's part of the equation because uh, imagine that in certain, com certain situation, you have to dose coagulant, flocculant, and even cellulose product which might get, you know, all the operation very expensive. Expensive. It depends. It needs to be calculated and uh, depends on, on the application and what customer wants. This is very important, I would say. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm kind of wondering if we have some ladies. It's such a gentleman business. It's a pity. I think we managed to go through the, the questions. Okay, okay. But if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email. Uh, we'll be very happy to receive one from you. Hopefully we will stay in touch. Uh, as I said, in the future, I would like to cover more topics uh, when it comes to sludge dewatering and especially uh, our volute dewatering press. Let's talk about more into depth in, in about the technology itself, how it works. Let's talk about the, the copies. Uh, let's talk about fake uh, counterfeit products on the markets. Unfortunately, this is happening too. Even if it's a good proof that, that, uh, that the product is good, we are not happy about that, of course. So we would like to inform our customers that the risk as exists. And after the April, we will be launching completely new machine on the market. So we plan to, to make another webinar about that to give you more details. Sorry, just one, one question to answer because I was managed to get some information about the number of installations in Europe. Okay. Roughly, just roughly, it, it will be roughly around a little bit over 500 units. Thanks, Sean, yeah. for checking. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much again for attending this webinar. I hope you like that. Uh, I hope you all stay safe uh, whenever you are. And uh, don't forget, keep dewatering. It makes sense. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.